And there's a reason why I keep adding to this document, which you're going to see here uh, soon enough. So down here underneath the table, let's go ahead and create a form. So we start out similar to the table. We want to declare this is going to be a form. So all of the form elements for this particular form are going to go in here. And if you're not quite sure what a form is, you will be once we take a look at it in the browser. So again, we're not going to go through every single element in a form, but we're going to look at some of the basics. Uh, most basic is a simple input field, um, which is another example of a tag that's a single tag. Uh, however, we need some properties in here. First property is going to be the type of input. And that's going to be text. So it's just a simple text field. We want to give it a name, which this name is pretty much up to us. This is going to be something you're going to use later when the form uh, is processed, when something happens, when somebody hits submit or OK. Uh, this is how you refer back to the data or whatever somebody typed into the field. So we'll just call this first name. And then we're going to give it a size. Uh, this is something that a lot of times is replaced with CSS. Um, pretty much anything having to do with formatting. Um, many times we're going to use CSS to, to do that instead of HTML. Uh, it's still important to know how to write it in HTML. So size, and we're going to say 40, and that stands for 40 characters. A lot of times, um, most times, you're going to be using units like pixels uh, by default, um, or, or EMs or points, or however you want to do it. Most times it's going to be pixels. For me, it's the graphic design background. Pixels make more sense to me than some of those other. Um, but in this okay, but in this case, it's going to be characters. How many characters can fit in this box? Now, this particular property uh, is how many characters can fit in the box that you can see. That doesn't mean that you can't put more more than 40 characters in there. You can just only see 40 at a time. If we want to actually limit that, we're going to do a max length of 40 as well, and then that'll st stick to 40. But let's go ahead and take a look at this really quick just to see what we're getting into. So let's take a look in the browser. And change this to example 6. Scroll on down here, and there you can barely see it. There's our form, our little entry form here. Simple text field, and it's limited to 40 characters. So there at this point, we've hit 40 characters. Um, now this isn't uh, a real good example yet. So let's go back to our HTML, and we're going to put uh, what's called a label here. Now labels can be done in different ways. Um, this is the standard way to do a label. So there we go. So that's going to make it look a little better. But before we go look at it, let's go ahead and I'm going to copy this whole line here, line 99, paste it, and we're going to change a couple things here. We're going to change this to last name and this to last name. So this is important for the user to see obviously you need to put your last name here and this is important for when the form is processed again when you hit OK or submit that it knows the difference between first name and last name so you can grab that information and do something with it if you use first name here again if you forget to do that what's going to happen is whatever somebody put in this last name field is going to replace the first name and that's not what you want so I'll go ahead and save a refresh and there you go now you'll notice I stack these in the code but uh, again white space doesn't really matter so what we're seeing in the browser is them sitting side by side or inline so one way we could do that is we could put a break tag here um, we could wrap each one of these in a paragraph tag, which, yes, this isn't a paragraph, um, but we want to use that padding between, that buffer between, to 
kind of space things out or drop them to another line. Let's just go ahead and do both. I'm going to wrap both of these in a paragraph tag. And again, if you're using Dreamweaver, you can simply highlight this. Do Control Shift P. Don't do Control P, that's print. Uh, and that will wrap that in there. Uh, if you're not using Dreamweaver, make sure you put your paragraph tag here and your closing tag here. So the reason I did this is I don't necessarily want to buffer between these two. I do want them on two different lines, um, but I want them kind of grouped together because we're going to do another group down here. So we'll save that. Take a look in the browser, and there you go. Now they're stacked. Now you could even go as far as do this. Uh, depending on how you want to kind of format things to make it easier to read and bump that out so you kind of see this is contained in the paragraph tag and you know or it's kind of grouped together so let's take a look at another form tag and that's going to be the select box or more commonly referred to as a drop down box or drop down um, menu but not really menu uh, that kind of goes into the uh, navigation of a website or the menu of a website. So we'll just call it a select box. So we start out with a select tag. I want to give it a name and we'll call this call this eyes and bump this down a little bit and similar to like a list or a table row we're gonna have something else in between these tags and that is called an option tag. And an option tag needs to have what's visual in the, in the drop-down box uh, in between the two tags. Uh, and then there's one other component, which we'll see here in a second. So this is eyes are blue. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this a couple times. Again, that's Control-C, Control-V to paste, or Command instead of Control if you're on a Mac. Blue, green... Brown and none, in case you have no eyes. So, again, I said there's another component to these option tags. There's the value portion of it. And so we go in here and we put this value property and the value of value. Um, this could be anything. If you're um, submitting this to a database sometimes you don't actually refer to things with you know blue you might have um, a, an ID or a number associated with that so this could be value one and then you know two three four and so on uh, but in this case we're just going to do blue and we're going to go ahead and copy this and paste it and I notice I got the space in there so I could quickly toss that in and green None. Now, this may seem a little redundant because you know this is the value here. This is what they're picking, but this is just the visual end of it. This is the value that's going to come back on the form. So the value of eyes is going to be either blue, green, brown, or none. So there's only going to be one value. Um, you'll notice a difference here. Visually, I wanted to make the first letter uppercase. Uh, in fact, we could even say blue eyes after this but as far as the information I want to send back I just want to know what color it is I could say no eyes so that kind of gives you an idea of why we have a value and then why we have the you know the visual end here and by visual again I mean what's going to show up in the browser so we'll go ahead and save this and take a look at what we've created here pop over to the browser hit F5 to refresh there you go, there's our little drop box here. Now we're kind of at the end of the page here and things are a little scrunched. Let's come back here and we're going to go ahead and give this a label. And again, white space doesn't matter, so even though I'm putting this on top, it's still going to show up next to it. Let's go ahead and kind 
wrap this in a paragraph tag. Um, and again, this isn't necessarily the best way to format things, but since we're not using CSS, we're kind of taking advantage of the fact that the paragraph tag has some buffer. Um, where this really comes into problems is, again, with the uh, accessibility for disabled and things like that, this is going to read as a paragraph and kind of confuse the screen reader for them. So, um, again, just showing you an example of how to kind of quickly push these things out. So go ahead and save that. Take a look. There you go. Again, our, our box is kind of short here, so we ran out of space. You see where we're going with that. Now we're going to put one more item in here. Uh, there are other form items, but again, I just want to kind of give you the gist of how this works. We're going to put in what's called a text area. And similar to the input field that we, we created first, the text field, um, it's for text, but at the same time, this is this is more of a giant box, you know, for text. You'll, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about when we see it. But this is meant for for more like a comment or or a message. If this is an email form, and you want them to be able to put in you know a message with it, this is where you would do that. And the text area has an opening and a closing tag, unlike the input field. Now in here we can put some properties in. We want to give it a name so that when the form is submitted we know what it is. Uh, let's call this comments and we can do and add another property called columns this is another thing that you might use CSS for instead uh, so this is going to pretty much similar to the characters or the size property um, of the input field this is going to be kind of similar here so put 40 characters for the column and this may not completely equal out, uh, just depending on how the browser formats it, but it's going to be similar in size. Uh, 40 columns, and then we can do rows, which is basically how many lines big is this going to be. doesn't mean similar to, again, the max, the max length and the size, where the size just means how much is visible. Uh, you, sh you can continue to type in these things, um, even though you might only put, say, 10 rows in. Somebody can still type more in there. So we go ahead and save that. Take a look at it. Scroll down. And now you can see our, our Dropbox is working better here uh, because we have more space. Here's our text area where we can type. And we can keep typing. And then we just end up getting a scroll bar there. So you see what I mean. So we have our form here. Um, I said this was the last thing, but actually uh, a form isn't complete without a submit button. Now, there are two different ways to make a submit button these days. And we're getting into, now we've talked about HTML in these last videos here. But up until this point, we really haven't done anything uh, that, that involves HTML5. Um, and now that's what we're going to kind of get into. Uh, just a little subtly here with this form, and then we're going to jump into it uh, more in the next few videos. So, one way to do it, and this is the, the older way to do it, is to make an input, which these inputs, uh, as we see, have a property of type. They can be different things. And this type is going to be a submit button. I'm going to give it a name. And we'll just be generic and call it submit. And we're going to give it a value. And this is what's going to show up in the button itself. Um, so we can say send this form. And there you go. We've created a submit button. Right, save that. Get a little refresh there. And there you go. There's our button. Now, by default, this is just going to refresh the page um, and send all that information. You can see it up here. First name equals um, nothing because we didn't put anything in here. So let's go ahead and put some things in here. Alan, want, I do actually have blue eyes, 
And here is my comment. Go ahead and send the form. And there you see, here are the values of what was submitted through the form. Um, now, in order to do something with these values, we need to learn a little more. Uh, but this is a great start and give you an idea of what happens here. And you see, um, this is where that name comes into play. So last name equals quant, eyes equals blue, comments equals here in my comments. So keep that in mind. Now into the HTML5 end of things, the newer way to do a button is with the button tag. And instead of the button text being in the value property, it's going to be here. And we're going to call this a reset button. Save. Take a look. and it resets the form. So if I put text in here and I decide oh, I don't like it, my answers, I want to do it again, we hit reset, it automatically clears the form for you. Now if we want to go along with the way we've been doing things, again, not necessarily the best way to do things, but it is a way to do it, we can go ahead and wrap this here in a paragraph tag. And again, in Dreamweaver, Control Shift P, we'll do that for you. And let's you know, format the code a little bit. And bump this out. And why not just go ahead and wrap this in a paragraph tag? There you go. Sometimes, if uh, sometimes you can get away with making forms uh, within a table uh, to format it, that can work. But uh, again, CSS is really the way to do it in the long run. So save. And refresh and we've bumped it down so our forms looking a little more acceptable now the last thing I want to talk about with this form again is another thing that was kind of introduced in, in HTML5 and I'll tell you it's a godsend a lot of things that were introduced with HTML5 and and even more so CSS3 uh, were godsends for us um, especially uh, web developers who aren't really designers um, there's a lot of things in here in CSS now that you can do that you would you used to have to do with uh, Photoshop or image editing programs. Uh, likewise, there's some things you can do in HTML5 that required a bunch of JavaScript to handle. And it's going to seem really simple, um, which is why this is so great, because it wasn't a simple thing to do until now. Um, but a lot of times you'll see in forms what we call placeholder text, where it kind of gives you an idea of what should go in there but when you click on it, that text goes away. So we can add another property to these fields called placeholder. And we can do this right here. And we can also do it in our text area. So we'll save that, and it's going to come. It's going to show up a little grayed out. And again, when you click on the field, it's going to hide it. So you can start typing, and it'll go away. Uh, and like I said, it seems really simple, and that's also what us developers were thinking for a long time. Why can't we just do this? Uh, but before HTML5, we had to use JavaScript to put text in there and hide it. So this is really cool.